my dear students. Today I will be teaching you about a wonderful creature known as the hagfish. Hagfish belong to the Chordata phylum. However, this is disputed by some researchers because while hagfish possess a skull, they lack a spinal cord, and they are the only living creature to be like this. Well, if you insist, here are some from my lab. Is that wriggly enough for you? Well, I've got news for you. They get even more wriggly. Hagfish are able to tie their bodies in knots, much like how a Chinese gymnast is able to. They are able to do this knotting because they have no spinal cord and no solid bones. Again, much like a Chinese gymnast. They tie themselves in knots to wipe away their slime but I'll cover that later. When it comes to understanding how hagfish reproduce, scientists are still rather confused and do not fully understand how they do it. What we do know is that they are hermaphroditic, possessing both a testicle and an ovary, but we believe that only one sex organ will be developed at any given time. However, hagfish are able to change their sex from season to season. They only lay between 20 to 30 eggs at a time and these eggs hatch into miniature, fully functional adults. They completely skip any larval stage. Hagfish are found worldwide, inhabiting cooler water that is at least 20 meters deep and below 50 degrees. They are able to survive very deep waters, however, and have been found at 1700 meters below sea level, or five and a half thousand feet for you Americans. Wherever they are, they will be dwelling on the seafloor, sometimes burying themselves in the mud. Hagfish are about the size of your arm, and have eel-like bodies. As I mentioned earlier, they have a skull, but no spine. Like the French. They have a single primitive eye that can only detect light. They have four hearts, and two fully functional brains. The primitive jaws that they... RUN! IT'S GODZILLA! Huh. No, not quite but you can see how their jaws are horizontally moving structures with tooth-like projections for rasping away rotten flesh off a carcass. They are scavengers, feeding off dead fish and mammals that sink to the sea floor, and in just a few hours they can eat several times their own body weight in rotting flesh. Often they will chew through the skin of a dead animal and start eating it from the inside out, and they are also known to do this to living animals from time to time. For over 330 million years, they have not had to change because they are perfectly adapted to the scavenging lifestyle and so have had no need to evolve. Even though they have nothing to do with eels, hagfish are sometimes called slime eels because of the slime that they can produce. This slime making ability is their most distinct characteristic. Hagfish have 150 to 200 slime glands along the side of their body, as my lab assistant is showing you here. These glands excrete a protein that mixes with the water and becomes a mucus-like slime. They can produce 5 gallons of slime in just a minute. The slime is used as a defense mechanism and can suffocate predators. Hagfish are rarely preyed upon because the predators have learned how horrible it is to suffocate on slime. But just imagine how horrible it must be to die choking on slime. It must be like having to watch Martha Stewart for an hour. In most of the world, hagfish are considered a useless bycatch. But in parts of Southeast Asia, they are considered a delicacy. And their smooth skin is used to make wallets, purses, boots, and so on. Scientists are also very interested in the hagfish for research into early evolution and better insight into health problems like cancer, because hagfish produce the most primitive form of insulin. Also, since their slime has similar properties to spider silk, research is being done to use the slime as a component of body armor. So there you have it, the hagfish, considered by many to be the world's most disgusting creature. Join us next time where we will be learning about another strange breed of creature, Scientologists. Farewell, my dear students.